Well, I think the relationship between diet and migraine is, is vastly misunderstood. I think there's a lot of problems with trying to identify dietary triggers. I think for one is that when there's so many different ingredients in foods, it's very difficult to pick out one tiny little food that might be um, an ingredient that might be triggering a headache. I think the other problem with uh, picking out triggers, not just dietary, but any other trigger for migraine is the fact that often a trigger doesn't always trigger a migraine. So it may, may only happen half the time. So then trying to figure out, well, if it only happens half the time, how do you know whether it's a trigger or not? So I think there are dietary triggers um, that can be identified, but the patients have to be very observant. And in some cases, we use uh, diaries, for example, where we can actually have them you know, write down all their foods. And then in general, if a food does uh, trigger a migraine or is associated with a migraine more than about half the time, then we might consider it a dietary trigger. The problem with diets is, is that a lot of times people can't follow them. So this is like a, a lifestyle change for most people. It's not just about, oh, you go on this diet. You need to stick with them. You need to keep them on the game plan. They probably need to meet with dietitians periodically to kind of re-review things. Their diets may need to be changed over time. So you're not gonna wanna eat the same diet plan from now until kingdom come. You know, so um, the key thing is trying to get them into a routine and habit of eating healthy, trying to stay trim, exercising, keeping their weight down. And if they're overweight, we try to get them to lose weight by whatever diet, whether it be a low carbohydrate diet or whether it be a low fat diet or some other diet that might help them lose weight because obesity itself might be associated with more frequent headaches. I think there's a number of them. If you think about the beverages that might trigger them, I think that caffeine can be a big uh, trigger um, and we could spend a lot of time just talking about caffeine alone. but. Um, if you do consume caffeine, you want to consume it on a regular basis at about the same time because after about 24 hours um, between the last cup and the following morning, um, you can start to go into caffeine withdrawal and that can trigger headaches as well as other symptoms like anxiety and so forth and so on. So, and the other thing too is the dosage of the caffeine may be very important. Uh, for example, when you start getting up to doses of four to 500 calories per day of caffeine, then they can actually um, cause anxiety and depressive symptoms and in some cases headaches. So it also it depends on the, the interval between doses and also probably depends on how much caffeine you consume. The other one would be alcohol. Um, alcohol is a very common uh, trigger, um, in particular beer and certain types of wine. Uh, patients often endorse the fact that red wine tends to be more of a trigger than, than white wine, but frankly I've seen uh, both uh, trigger, trigger migraines as well. In terms of the foods, um, there are a number of possibilities. One is uh, monosodium glutamate. That's a natural flavor found in um, most processed foods. And there's a lot of different names for it. Could be called like, could be called MSG, or could be called glutamate, or it could be called natural flavor, could be called natural flavoring, or anything that says partially hydrogenated on it. Um, and some patients seem to be particularly susceptible to that, particularly when it's in liquid form. So if someone, um, you go to a Chinese restaurant and if they still put MSG in like their soup and you consume a lot of that, then it may actually generate a headache. Other, food, other uh, ingredients and or foods um, would be things like um, nitrates. So those are preservatives found in you know, bacon, lunch meat, sausage. Um, and uh, in some patients that, that can trigger a headache. That's, there's one headache called hot dog headache which is where you consume a hot dog and then you actually end up having a headache after that. Um, other, other, other foods that can uh, trigger it would be, uh, or ingredients would be sweeteners. So there's evidence that uh, aspartame, particularly when administered in really high dosages, uh, there's at least two reasonably well done studies that suggest that it was a, is a trigger. There's one that suggests it's not. Uh, but the one, the one in particular was done in migraine patients and that one seemed to be a positive study suggesting that, that it could uh, trigger migraine attacks. And the other one is sucralose, although there's not a lot of great evidence for sucralose, there are some case studies to suggest that could be a trigger in individual uh, patients as well. And then there's a lot of other ingredients in foods. Uh, the fatty acid content of the foods, there's something called omega-3s and omega-6s, and omega-3 fatty acids are thought to be pro-inflammatory, which ca means causing inflammation, and I'm sorry, anti-inflammatory, um, reducing inflammation, and the omega-6s are thought to be pro-inflammatory, and uh, sometimes the fatty acid content of foods can, can influence uh, headache as well. 
Um, folate is important for certain patients. There is a very common gene mutation called the methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase gene mutation. And that's a, a gene mutation that's been associated with, with migraine in general, but in particular patients that have the auras where they get like little flashing lights or zigzaggy lines that occur before uh, the headaches begin. And some of those patients might benefit from vitamin replacement. So things like um, uh, folic acid and B12 and vitamin B6, there's like a combination uh, pill that we might, might use. So some patients are folate deficient. In addition, sodium can sometimes trigger headaches um, as well. And there's one study that suggested in patients that had a history of, of what, what they call prehypertension, so they were like high blood pressures but not quite high enough to call high blood pressure, that, that restricting salt may decrease the frequency of headache. And there's another study that was conducted in, in, um, in the population in general, not just in people that are prone to high blood pressure, where they found that actually um, a high salt diet was actually preventative. And I think that discrepancy or that conflict between the two studies is if you have high blood pressure or, or very close to it, probably avoiding salt is probably very good. If you're someone whose blood pressure runs low all the time, and that happens not uncommonly in female migraine patients, then salt may actually be beneficial. So salt may be a kind of a two-edged sword as well. So there's a variety of other things. Sometimes vitamin D deficiency can occur, and they have linked vitamin D, D deficiency with uh, fibromyalgia. And uh, so in some cases, maybe replacing vitamin D with a supplement might uh, be helpful as well.